This is to show you how eye charts sprung while looking at a picture of a historical object. What you see on top of the graph paper is actually a sample that I have made based on an object from the Metropolitan Museum called the Turban from the Head of a Mummy of a Child. It's accession number 30.3.56. So if you go to metmuseum.org and search in the collections for 30.3.56, you will see a picture of it. It's, um, it's a good choice for this exercise because there are a number of pictures. You can zoom in on the pictures. Also, the pattern is regular. It repeats. It's small. It's simple. Doing this chart will not get you the entire information for charting or for sorry constructing an exact replica. It will only give you the small repeated motif, which you could then use for a bag or a scarf, that sort of thing. So it's about interpreting and really getting to grips with the construction of a historical piece by charting the sprung. So you can see it's an embossed, ex or sorry, not embossed, an exchange motif. You have one diamond here, and then just to the side of it, you have another diamond here. This diamond expands as this one contracts, and that's an ex exchange motif. It's exchanging the width here, and then it's up here, it's wide. I hope that makes sense, but I consider this an exchange motif. An example in knitting would be a lace motif of, um, of a leaf, or you might have a candle flame motif in knitting, and they're very similar. So I will um, put that away, and I'm going to look at the picture. So I hope that you've um, gone and found that picture online and um, zoomed in on it. A, it's in a form of diamonds, holes outlining a diamond and the center is interlinking. A diamond has four points so we'll just arbitrarily put the top of it here. We'll count the number of holes down to the point on the side there, from this point, we count one, two, three, and then the outer edge of the diamond. And then again, one, two, three. Bottom point of the diamond, one, two, three. Outer edge of the diamond, and then back again, one, two, three. That's a complete diamond. And these represent holes. This is according to Collingwood's notation. He puts a vertical stripe inside the square on graph paper to indicate where a hole is placed. Each square is two threads, and when you make a hole, it involves three threads on this side and three threads on that side when you create a hole in, um, with multiple threads in sprung. So in this line, there are two holes. Um, these threads are involved in this one. You can see that these holes are further apart. There are three squares in between, and here there's only one square. This square right here will have regular interlinking. None of the threads in this square are going to be involved in the holes. The same is true of these squares. These. And so putting a dot according to Collingwood is just a simple way of saying that these um, pairs of threads are not involved in the holes, whereas in this square, threads are lending their threads to this hole over here in this column. The, um, the rows are only show the plate row. If you look at regular sprung interlinking, there's a plate row and an over plate row, a row one and a row two to create the interlinking. And uh, so well, there shows an interlinking here and three interlinkings here. When you actually go to create this, you will also get two interlinkings, four interlinkings, four again here and two again here. 
but all this shows you is the plate row. To extend this, one, two, three, outer edge, one, two, three, bottom, two, three, outer edge, one, two, three, back to the top. You see you've got an exact replica. We can put in our dots. And one, two, three, hit the edge, come back. Same here. Continue. Oops. And get completely muddled. This is why it's better to do it in pencil. So ignore that part. And you would continue on to make this as big as you would want it. If you have a scarf, you might say, I would like my scarf so big. To calculate the number of warp threads, each square is two warp threads. This is going to need to take in the two warp threads over here, so you'd start counting here. I would add some extra squares on this side so that I could have some plain interlinking on the edges outside of this whole um, pattern. And then wherever you stop, you also you start counting there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. until you get to the other side. Multiply that by 2. Multiply the number of squares by 2 because each square represents two warp threads. And then you need to add 2 to that sum. Um, and you'll get the total number. There needs to be one at either side to um, give the extra thread for the plate row. And then you will know how many threads to warp. And to, um, to get the spacing correct for the length of the warp, that is going to take some gauge. The, um, the piece that this is drawn from is a turban. And it's an interesting thing about the construction, where you would stop building your rows, you actually have some leeway. You won't wreck the structure of the construction of the piece if you have to go a few more rows. And a lot of sprung items are like that. They don't um, get you into a corner with the design. And I think that's an interesting feature of sprung. Anyway, do it in pencil. Have a look at... Um, historical items, put images online, look at where the holes are and try to put them on graph paper and uh, then that could get you to actually replicating, well not replicating, this won't exactly show you how to recreate a turban but you can use it, you can make things that are inspired from historical objects by charting them.